I watch Hello Okanagan from Vernon. Hey guys, t-shirts, mugs, all of our merch, we deliver anywhere. So click the link below. Oh man, I can just think of the jokes that Peter's gonna have when he finds out that I'm a Pokemon collector. I wonder what David's gonna think of an old dude who collects comic books. Oh. Hey brother. Hey man. How's it going? Good, how are Excited you? Excited about today's episode? Absolutely, we're here in front of uh, Kelly's shop here, Ebenezer's in town. I'm very excited to, uh, uh, to get in there, the show about collectibles. Yeah, we got uh, Paul from Omar's. He's got some coins and cards. And then there's Kelly that owns Ebenezer's. He's got some ex incredible expensive comic books. We've got some friends from West Kelowna that are here. They actually are bringing props that were used in movies, like actual on-set props. And then we take a little drive and we're gonna see some tanks, people that collect some World War II, et cetera, vehicles. All right. Yeah, man. Why don't we head on in there and get this, uh, get this party started Let's here? Let's go. All right. everyone welcome to the next episode of hello Okanagan and for you collectors at home you geeks that have been told by ex-girlfriends or mothers to throw your stuff away guess what this episode's for you Richard how you doing my friend not too bad how are you good thank you for coming all the way down no problem um, when did all this start for you when did you start the company or actually when did you start becoming a collector before we get to the company um, 25 years ago I saw a movie called Stargate uh -huh. and I absolutely fell in love with it and I said I have to have a prop from that something to physically touch to connect with the movie yeah so I got a piece of the raw ship the panel with the hydro hieroglyphics right. and from there I just went crazy I just had to have a prop from another movie and another movie and then there was Terminator and then Star Wars and then 25 years later I have this huge collection with about 300 um, screen news movie props I cool yeah. well what do you got here in front of the table let's start with the smaller pieces here and then we'll get into the larger ones okay the smaller ones okay we'll start with this one here this is from the movie Limitless uh, with Bradley Cooper. Exactly. So this that, is actually the, on screen. That's, yeah, that's the actual, actual So package. Bradley Cooper touched this. Yeah, yeah, he held up. So this here is one of my favorites. It's one of the smallest, but one of the coolest. There's a 1972 movie called Soylent Green. In in the movie, at uh, near the end, uh, you see the conveyor belts with all the Soylent Green crackers. And this here is actually one of the crackers from, from the movie. Are you kidding me? Well, what else do we have, my friend? Uh, so we'll start with this guy here. And this, this is not Ted? That's not Ted, no. a lot of people think it is. Okay. But the movie Terminator Genesis, you see yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger walking through the hospital with the bear. Yeah. This is the actual bear that he had. <laughs> In the bottom, there's a tube for the shotgun that he had. So there was a shotgun the bear. So he was carrying it through and that's the actual bear. Can I check it out? Yep. Yeah, if you take a look at the bottom, there's a hole there with the tube. There's, there's the hole in the tube right there. That is insane. Now these two here are from my favorite movie. Stargate. These are from Stargate, the original 1994 movie. And this is an actual raw mask from the movie that they, that they had. And this is a, a production made uh, Anubis head from the movie. And uh, raw is a little weathered because he is made of latex and he has um, uh, worn out a little bit. And there's a company called Tom Spina Designs. We're gonna get him to actually restore it for us. He's restored a couple of props for us and he makes them look like brand new. He's well, there's restoration amazing. guys, like yeah. there is with cars and there such. There is, yeah, yeah. Wild and they, it's amazing what they can do. They can make it look like the first day it was made. Thank you so much, we really appreciate oh, that. Yeah, let's go take a look at some of the uh, actual costumes that you brought as well. That sounds good. But first, let's go check out Kelly. He's got some amazing comic books we gotta check it out. All right, we're here now with Kelly, the owner of Ebenezer's, and we're gonna get deep diving right into the comic books right away here. Very, very excited. Thank you for joining us today, Kelly. No problem. Comic books are my jam. I'm excited <laughs> for this part. It's you, all you, Peter. So, uh, Kelly, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You, you mentioned we had you on in a previous episode, but yep. for those that potentially haven't watched that, why don't you tell us a little bit 
origin, how you got into comic books? Uh, I started with, in elementary school, um, and friends got me diving into it, basically. They dragged me here, actually, to Ebbs when it first opened in, in 83, and they got me buying one, and then after that it kind of snowballed. And let's uh, start with uh, what started getting you into comic books. Which one was uh, it? My very first comic was actually this one here, um, X-Men 172. This is my very first... I don't know why. Um, my friends were into X-Men, Okay. and this is what... Okay, I bought it. I was like, okay, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I fell in love with another comic really quickly, um, and when these came out, the I don't know if you know, the animal craze in comics came in. Yeah. And that was this stuff here, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Now this is the number one, fourth print. Yeah. But um, I quickly acquired a first print. And this was in the 80s? Or early early 80s, 80s, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is the first print of the Turtles. And it was it black and white, I think, right? Yes, the whole series was black and white. Yeah. And uh, pretty quickly, I fell in love with Turtles. Oh, it okay. turned into a kid's thing where yeah. originally it's very adult. Yeah. There's blood, guts, and gore, yeah. and uh, it was very mature reading. So it wasn't for your average kid. It wasn't compared to what it is today. And, uh, there's there's a big surge in the market right now. People are collecting first appearances and stuff like that. And the, one of the big first appearances right now is uh, Venom. Um, so what you're saying is like there's there's episode. Sorry, there's um, the number one comic book, which is like the first Spider-Man ever, the first Batman ever, whatever it might be. But then there's also the first appearance. Like the first appearance of Wolverine before he you had bet. his own comic book. Yeah, actually I got that one right here. Oh jeez, that's, awesome. that's the first Wolverine right there. Okay, so uh, he was well, an Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, and actually that's a, a good point. That first appearance thing is actually changing a little bit. They're now doing what's their first, um, first appearance and what their first full appearance. And uh, like for example, this is technically the first appearance of Wolverine, but they're yes. now arguing that this might be his first appearance now. So guys in the market are trying to push. There's kind of a, a you know an argument going on right now. When is there technically the first? Appearance? And what you just handed me is actually a reprint. That is a reprint. Well. Yeah, an original. You know, it, um, I didn't bring one, but yeah. uh, um, but but they do lots of reprints of all those old. Comics so this is X Men number one, but it's a reprint. So as you can see, it's only five dollars and eighty cents. What would the original one cost in semi, on semi good semi good condition? Uh, easily ten grand. Wow. Or more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So talk to me a little bit, like what is in, in comic books, I'll, I'll compare it to obviously like the, the card space and even the movie prop. What is the hero prop or the original rookie card uh, that is sought after? What is that? Is that the first appearance or is it the it first It depends comic? on what you collect. Okay. Uh, if you're a big Spider-Man fan, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15, um, this one right here is probably, uh, is probably the, one of the most wow. sought afters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a holy grail for Spider-Man collectors. But if you are a Wolverine fan, you want that first Wolverine. Yeah. Um, it just depends on what you're into. For those viewers that don't know what grade it is, that was something that obviously like came in just in the past few decades, and it's where they yeah. put a they put a number on the card or on the the comic book Same to to yeah. dictate basically how good the condition is in. So that for older comics that can get higher gradings, it's insane because if you think about it, this has been around for you know twice my lifespan so far. And there is some comics that are like say one of the first Superman ones, it could be a 2.5, yes. but it's still worth something. Oh yeah, uh, even there's not low that many grade, around. Like, well, here's an example. Um, this is an amazing Spider-Man number one. Um, wow. But uh, it's a low grade, because it's in poor shape. You do have a better I, grade I have one better yourself. ones than this, yeah. but um, this one's in a poor, uh, poorer shape, but even you know in a poorer shape, it's worth several thousand dollars as it is. And I see an autograph on there. That's Stan Lee's. Right there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, you my bet. friend. Um, again, this is Kelly from Ebenezer's in Vernon. If you live in the North Okanagan, definitely come down here, pick his brain. This guy's got everything in the shop here that you'll see. Everything from comic books, cards, uh, sports cards, um, uh, Pokemon cards. He's got action figures. I mean, he's got posters. He's got books, miniatures. Uh, there's tons of stuff here for all of you collectors. We'll uh, now take a break and let's go visit with Elizabeth Flowers, our Okanagan Update correspondent. Hello Okanagan, I'm Elizabeth Flowers and here's your Okanagan Update. It's the end of October and that means Halloween. Lots of tricks, lots of treats, but remember to stay safe, keep your group small and stay seen out there. Wear something reflective on your body so that traffic can see you while you're out enjoying your evening. 
And at the end of Halloween, when we're disposing our pumpkins, the best place to put those guys is into your compost bin. They're full of nutrients, full of nitrogen, and great for the garden. If you can't put them in your compost bin, then it is suggested that they go into the yard waste bin, but skip putting them into your garbage. And when you go to bed tonight, don't forget to turn back your clocks one hour. And a fun way to start and kick off November 1st is by attending Winfield's 31st Annual Christmas Craft Fair. This will be taking place at the Winfield Memorial Hall from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. It is a free event to attend. However, you are encouraged to bring something for the food bank. That's all for your weekly Okanagan update. To stay up to date on all the events happening around town, check out Castanet's event page. And now, back to the guys. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome back, Okanagan. We're now going to be talking about sports cards, Pokemon cards, coins. coins. We're going to be talking about albums, a little bit of everything. We're here with another good friend of ours from Vernon, Paul from Omar's Collectibles. How are you doing, my friend? Good. Good. Actually, before we get into your little collection here, uh, tell us about yourself. When did you become a geek like us? And a little bit about Omar's. Well, um, my parents had an antique store and a secondhand store when I was 11, yeah. 12. So we'd go garage selling every weekend. Oh, I've been collecting since I was 12. With uh, some of the cards here that I see, um, what do we got up first well, here? This is something I found last night, which I have put away for about eight years, but the value of the Pokemon cards here have gone extremely through the roof. But here's three unopened packs, probably the second ones that they ever did in English. Yeah. And uh, the Charizard one is the most valuable, of course. And then uh, I wanted to keep it a set, so I'm glad I did because I don't think you can find a set for sale now. A few years ago, you could. What Paul has here, if I'm not mistaken, the second print was referred to as shadowless. Um, so that's really interesting because you know you'll have the the shadows here that you notice on the back. Um, so that is the the third print. So this is the base set, and then you'll get here, like I said, this little stamp right there is what you call the first edition. And then behind the card, you'll notice that there's no shadow. That's shadowless also. So the second print that he's got here won't have the stamp, but it will have no shadow in the background. So these cards right here, I mean, many thousands of dollars right now and just will continue to rise and rise and rise at the current rate that it's going. So it's absolutely incredible. I'm nerding out like crazy the fact that you've got uh, some of those. Besides the Pokemon cards, let's talk. get, get into the sports cards here. What kind of sports cards uh, did you first get into and some of the ones that you brought here? Let us know. Yeah, I just brought a few to show um, um, a couple old Gordy Howes. This one, wow. this one is pretty cool because um, they spelt his name wrong. That's it's hilarious. just cool that they had made that mistake back then. And, and I know we're gonna him get being in... the most famous hockey player at the time, and then they spelt his name wrong. Yeah. And then, well, this is the uh, Connor McDavid 9.5 that you guys were talking about grading earlier. Yeah. And uh, this one's a 9.5. A 10 is worth a, a more. Like, What would the 9.5 cost right now? Um, I think it's going for around eight nine hundred dollars Did you ever like, open packs with your like with your parents or just with your friends with, and stuff yeah like with my son we would we would we make would open packs events. make it an event yeah, yeah. I make them wait till the end of the night and yeah and, you know, no after dinner okay now we can open up a few packs and sometimes you can really luck out if you get the right the right rookie at the time whoever's hot at the time and you also collect yeah coins I, I, and dollars uh, a few coins what, and uh what are some of the cool ones that you brought here tell us a little bit about them um just some that are in good shape like um you can see the beard and the hairlines and if and that's what the collectors want really pristine um that sad. one's just an old european russian coin there's oh. lots of people that collect german this is a really sought after one it has the zeppelin on it it was they made it in the wartime and that one is graded okay that's so my newest us. coin and i just had to buy it because it just how cool it's got a prehistoric shark tooth and you've got a, a bill here showing the uh the inflation that happened in the zimbabwe. inflation in zimbabwe yeah Unbelievable. So, so it, that is a tr it's, 20 a tw it's a real 20 billion or 20 trillion? 20 trillion dollar bill. 20 trillion dollar bill. And then now we got albums. You also collect albums. Yeah, this is Elvis's first record, um, uh, 33, a big one, and it's the first pressing. And is this the, the reason I kept this for myself uh, yeah. was. Um, Woo, he's busting it. The, oh, no. Is the condition, there's no scratches. So to find it in that shape is rare. Okay, well we gotta talk about this one really quick. I well, had this growing up. Yeah. Cause in the old, in the old days, before there was dirt, um, being a Star Wars fan, 
I, there was nothing besides, you know, comic books or even before, sorry, the comic books didn't even come out right away. There was not much of Star Wars that you can take home with you, but the only thing that I was able to find was the album. So to relive the movie as a kid, I just played this over and over and over. And in my mind, I can remember the scenes, you know, from the movie. <laughs> and uh, this one here is just, um, it's a Slayer album, but they only made 200 of them. And it's red vinyl. Incredible. And so there's lots of heavy metal collectors. It's, heavy metal is very uh, sought after in vinyl. This is a Bob Dylan. It's a Canadian pressing. And uh, there was American it, and Canadian pressing. Yeah, the American one is worth like eleven thousand dollars if you wow. can find that one. Well, thank yeah. you so much, my no, friend. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Again, this is Paul from omar's collectibles in the north okanagan here in vernon if you have any pokemon cards sports cards or any other kind of collectibles anything to do with sports especially come and see him and for you parents out there don't throw the stuff away come and see kelly and paul Welcome back, everyone. We are here again with Richard from Empire Movie Props. How are you doing, Richard? Not too bad. Perfect. Why don't you introduce us to your friend over here? This is Mr. White. Hi, Mr. White. And uh, what do you have for us, Mr. White? Um, well, this is uh, an actual production used hazmat suit, the white one, at the, the, when he was doing the drugs and in, 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 in making the blue meth in the, the beginning of the, um, the series. He was wearing a white hazmat suit, him yeah. and um, Jesse Pinkerman. This is an actual baggie of Blue Sky used on the show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's candy. It's candy, it's okay. candy, yeah. So you can eat this. Well, well it's a little old, but. <laughs> so let us know about your furry friend over here. So this is, um, oh, before I go any further, one thing I just wanted to mention yeah. is we had oh. a Breaking Bad script signed by uh, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul. Wow. wow. So that's one of our favorite things. So this is an actual screen used uh, gorilla armor from Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. And what we did is, uh, what we do so is- So they put a real monkey in here? What? <laughs> uh, so what we actually do is when we get when we get the props, we kind of think, what can we do with it? So we actually make custom make the mannequins uh, to fit uh, the props. So we actually custom made this mannequin to fit the, uh, the armor. Incredible. So like I said, he's part of our Planet of the Apes collection. We have a whole bunch of other props from Planet of the Apes. Nice, nice. And then what's the next? Oh, I know the next one. I know this one. This one actually scared the crap out of me when I saw the movie, especially this specific oh, scene here. Is this is the T-1000. And these are actual bullet hits from when you see him get shot. Yeah. And this piece here, uh, this is a rare piece because when you see Arnold Schwarzenegger shoot him when he's frozen and he blows up and he goes, yeah. hasta la vista, baby. Um, and then you see it all start to melt, melt, and, go back melt together. and come together. This is an actual piece of when it started melting. Because what they did is they combined practical, which was the foam um, yes. thing with the CCG and combined the two. Well, let's take a walk and uh, go check out a couple more from your favorite movie. Yes, that sounds good. I'm here with my friend Ra from Stargate and Richard and David. Richard, your favorite movie, my friend. Yes. You want to give us some info on these pieces? Now these two pieces are our, our newest acquisition and uh, Brian Capri who owns really cool props. He did um, all the uh, weapons and he did the uh, the main characters for the movie Stargate Origins which was a, a web mini series. And I got a hold of Brian and Brian said would you be interested in purchasing these from me and I said sure. So this is Horace and uh, he is a beautiful piece. Now, my wife, she, Beverly, she is absolutely amazing. Like, so this is the original um, sh um, um, be um, shoulder and the, the head. The head piece. Uh, but the rest of the costume um, wasn't available. Um, it had been taken apart. So we like couldn't- destroyed Yeah, destroy, yeah we just, we, we couldn't get it. I can't it. believe how many people do that. So my, my wife, she actually made a reproduction of, of this wow. outfit for, for this. And she you have a talented wife job. and a wife who allows you to collect bronze. Yes, I, I, amazing. I, I, yes, she is. I love her to death. <laughs> and this is Raw. And this is the, the actual mask. And this is the collar from Raw. And again, my wife, the rest of the costume wasn't available because it was gone. 
Uh, so my wife made a reproduction of that too to, to go with this. Now the cool thing about this guy is before we have the original one from the 1994 movie and we yeah. have this one. And then the Stargate TV series, there was one other helmet and I know a guy who has the raw one for that. So these three out there, we have two in our collection and a friend of mine, he has the third one in his collection. So awesome. um, we're, we're pretty stoked that we have two of the three, so. So where do people get more information? What's your website? Uh, Empire Movie Props, so www.empiremovieprops.com is our website. Okay. And uh, we have about two, 250 props that we actually sell. And then also on the website, we have uh, pictures of our collection that we actually, for our private, um, our private collection that we have. So well, awesome, my friend. Thank you so much. And if you guys are looking not just for collectibles, but for an expensive Halloween costume, check them out. Hey Okanagan, we just took a little trip and we're in Lumbee now with Al from Camo Country Weddings and Events. And we've been hearing about this place and we had to come and check it out ourselves. So Al, my friend, you wanna let us know before we get into the specifics exactly, um, what do you guys do here? You're a wedding venue or you're a prop company? What are you guys? Uh, we're a wedding venue. Okay, so people can rent your land and have their reception, their ceremony and all that kind of fun stuff on there. Correct, yes. But yeah. what makes it different and the reason you're on our collector's episode is because you collect things. What do you collect? Uh, military vehicles, <laughs> tanks. Um, yeah, mainly just all post-war military vehicles. And what got you into this? Uh, just a lifelong childhood uh, passion. So, uh, um, yeah, when I sold the company and retired, then I thought, well, if we're going to do it, may as well do it, eh? Yeah. So, Al, why tanks? What, what is it that captivates you about tanks? Um, probably the mystery, the different. Yeah. Like, um, there's no two alike? Um, well, there's lots alike, but they, they're different to work on than anything else. And being a mechanic by trade, so like I fix them, work on them. So, uh, um, yeah, they're just, just different. And do any of these, I know it's probably legal, but do they shoot or you have, before you buy them, they have to be like shut down or yeah, soldered down? demilled, so yeah, so they won't shoot. Being that this is the collector's episode, uh, is, this a, is this an asset that appreciates like rookie cards, like comic books and things like that as well? In value? Yeah, they've definitely gone up in value, um, especially in the last couple of years as the these are all British. Most of my stuff is British, a little bit of American stuff, but um, the British now have adopted the same thing as the Canadians and it's hard, like they won't sell into the public anymore. So they changed that a couple of years ago. So now anything that's out there is all that's ever gonna be out there. So it's actually made a big difference. Back with some more tanks here with Al. Al, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, the pieces you got behind us here? Well, these are three different CVRT variants. So CVRT stands for Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tract, and there's actually ten different variants in this this um, era of CVRT. Uh, so, so these are the these are the guys that they would bring out first before they brought up the big guys. Uh, exactly, they're reconnaissance vehicles. So okay. um, yeah, so they would go out and see what's scout out, scout out, and, and radio back coordinates okay. for the big stuff. And is this part of your personal collection? It's not really used in your events and weddings. Most not, of the part, not really. They they actually they don't really look like a tank other than this one when the gun's in. Yeah. Um, so the other ones look like tanks. So that's cool. that's the big attraction. They eh? cool. This one here is actually a. Uh, this is a recovery vehicle. There's winches in the back of this one. Uh huh. That one's a commander, command post. Um, so this one, when the gun's in and it's all ready to go and everything, how many people actually fit would be dry, uh, riding around this one? Three man crew. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, the tank itself, this is the b big bad boy. This is the one that will see action. This is the one that they send out and yeah, this blow is, things up. This is the one, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's a 
the main battle tank. Uh, it's a 120 millimeter gun on it. Jeez. And uh, how heavy is it? Uh, the best part is 60 ton. <laughs> and how many crew would be in this one? Four. Wow. So and one ma one manning and then three in the uh, uh, one, yeah one in the gun compartment. One driver and yeah. then uh, commander, gunner, and a loader. And this specific tank model, uh, which wars would it have been in? Um, it was Cold War era. Okay. So, um, 60s, is that it? Yeah, I believe this was this one was built in 73 oh, wow. or 74, okay. and it came out of service in early 90s. And in your collectibles, because because of the bad weather, we couldn't see everything, um, what are your other pieces that you have here on your property? Um, well, seven CVRTs. Uh, a ferret scout car, armored car. Uh, you have an like you have a vehicle that goes in on water and on land. Yeah, there's four stalwarts here that are they're all none of them run, but okay. uh, but they're. What's they're, the purpose of them? <laughs> um, Why were they made in the first place? They followed the Abbott, which was the first one that you took pictures of. The tank. Um, yeah. It would have followed those with uh, more ammunition and supplies, fuel and stuff. So wherever there was an Abbott, there was one of those behind it. Okay. So, so they, they didn't have guns or anything on them. They were just there to support. No, they're and just bring strictly equipment support. And everything. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take a walk with Liz right now, who's going to show us uh, the other part of the property where they have events and weddings. All right, we're back and in the cold with uh, Liz here from Camo Country Wedding and Events. Liz, thanks for your hospitality. Al was awesome showing us his collection of tanks. But before we end the show, we wanted to let people know about what you offer here. So it's a full reception, ceremony location for weddings, yep. corporate functions, events, anything people want. Whatever they want. Yeah, we do everything from uh, mini elopements right to weekend packages. Cool. And as we walked around, we checked out some really cool things like the um, uh, 3D, three-dimensional backdrop that you have. You've got a really cool location for the reception, which is covered as well. And you can have something outdoors and a lot of cool props, as you saw with the tanks and toys and phone yeah. booth. Phone booth. Yeah, that was a really cool <laughs> phone booth as well. So yeah. anything that you want to, uh, what is your website, by the way? Uh, www.camelcountryweddings.com. Awesome. Well, make sure you guys check it out. The link is below. Hey guys, if you're looking to reach us, you can find us on YouTube, Hello Okanagan. Make sure you like and subscribe. Also, Hello Okanagan on Facebook and Instagram for all the behind the scenes and any new announcements and contests for your chance to win.